the latest um, internal working group uh, that submitted its report last week it was uh, constituted in june and its mandate was to look at the ownership and corporate structure issues um, in india's private sector banks now in terms of uh, the rec- broad re- set of recommendations uh, what the iwg has recommended uh, are measures which will um, raise the prudential norms um, for uh, private sector banks these are issues like uh, so it has addressed issues like uh, uh, ensuring that um, shareholders in banks um, or uh, do not abuse their position the the capital requirement by banks uh, across different uh, types of banks is better uh, more money is required so that they are uh, well capitalized um and it has also ensured that uh, the norms do not vary uh, because over time as 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 different norms came up for different types of banks um there were gaps between existing banks and new banks so one of the things that uh, the iwg has uh, recommended is to harmonize rules uh, and so that if uh, tomorrow some rules change for new banks uh, then uh, and they have to comply by say higher standards of prudential norms then existing banks um, by the same rule will have to also comply by those rules now this is uh, one particular recommendation which has caught everybody's attention and it has come for a fair bit of criticism in this what the iwg has said is that um, rbi could allow large corporates uh, industrial large cor- uh, industrial houses which by definition means um, uh, corporate houses uh, with uh, assets more than 5000 crores and with uh, more than 40% of their uh, gross income coming from non financial uh, businesses so essentially not the typical financial businesses but non financial businesses big businesses being allowed to float their banks being allowed to become promoters the reason why this is being criticized is that um, typically there has to be a difference between uh, people who lend and the people who borrow uh, big businesses which are not into financial um, transactions say a steel manufacturer a oil producer or a car manufacturer um, or any such uh, a big uh, business uh they need a lot of money they need a lot of uh, they have huge credit requirements now when you allow them to become banks uh you are um, uh, essentially uh, allowing a certain conflict of interest in built into the system because the borrower is also now the lender and uh, what is crucial in this is that um in a bank uh you tend to receive you i mean by by definition you accept deposits from common people so it's not some private transaction between two corporate houses it is about uh, uh using the money that common investors common depositors uh, are giving you as a bank and then what do you do with that a crucial uh, a, a technical term in this is connected lending and that is uh, generally considered to be the reason why um it's not an advisable thing uh, to sort of allow such large corporates which are not into um financial business um uh, for them to be allowed to become promoters of banks so as i mentioned connected lending is essentially when um a bank which is um, being promoted by a non financial big firm um may be uh, in a, in many ways abused um the by the promoters to lend them lend the depositors money for the firm's activities and there is no way no filter uh, there is no third party check on that um typically uh, we've heard so many cases of um, evergreening of loans and that is essentially the first kind of uh connected lending uh, evergreening of loan is essentially when when a bank would extend say i'm failing to pay back my previous loan and the bank says that you know take another loan and uh, pay back the last one 
and this cycle goes on and we've seen several such cases in the past um uh, and um, uh, we've also seen cases where promoters or influential owners um have used uh, their bank for extending loans uh, to people connected to them um uh, the cases in ICICI bank yes bank um even in non financial uh, companies like dhfl uh, all these episodes have time and again uh, come through uh, um you have to understand uh, this recommendation in the context of where india's growth is and what we need to do to grow fast as an economy and also uh, what is the state of indian banking uh there's a fair amount of data that uh, the iwg has shared which shows how indian banking um uh, when you compare it with com- with other economies like china or us or uh, any of those uh, economies which have the same uh, amount of gdp uh we uh, our banking is unable to uh, fund as much of e- economic growth as we would like it to be uh, the banks are smaller there are fewer banks smaller banks uh less efficient um uh, and uh, we need to infuse more um you know vibrance in 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 this in this system um now where where can you know more banking and more efficient banking happen so if you look at the data you will find that many of the public sector banks are struggling with npas non performing assets bad loans um and that uh, that uh, that chances of more bad loans happening after the covid um uh, moratoriums get over and more recognition happens are very high so npas are likely to increase again and essentially public sector banks having or government owned banks having npas essentially means that the government will have to fund those banks and as many of you might know that government's own finances are under tremendous pressure they were already bad before um, covid and after covid it has it has really taken a turn for the worse so government will struggle to fund economic activity through its uh, banks so government owned banks private sector banks on uh, on the other hand have, have been more efficient uh, uh, as compared to uh, public sector banks with lower levels of nps and uh, there is a potential there to exploit um many other countries have done this you know many other countries uh, did allow big cor- corporates to start banks and they did grow for a very long time uh, although there have been also some very bad episodes in japan or korea uh, several such countries where when the economic uh, crisis happened then these banks collapsed and then they had economy wide uh, ramifications so the way to see this is that uh, perhaps the iwg uh, is trying to uh, infuse um or look for ways in which it can boost uh, india's banking um and uh, provide answers um for um, fueling india's economic growth uh, of course uh, as has been pointed out by many um uh, having big corporates run banks uh, comes with its own uh, risks